Yeah, hello, I'm Cliff Walker from VacuumBills.com. We make vacuum systems for composites, uh, especially the resin infusion process. And with the resin infusion process, one of the things you have to deal with is resin to stop it, uh, an excess of it, leaving the part and getting all the way through to the vacuum pump, which would be instant destruction for the pump. So we make resin traps, which are just standalone resin traps. We also make complete systems, of which one is, I'm standing behind one. But a resin trap is something like this. Um, it's an outer vessel with some arrangement of controls. Um, in our case, we put vacuum gauge on it. We also have a vacuum regulator. There's a lid up here, which has a number of connections. Um, the tubing connections can be of different sizes. So that's what a resin trap looks like. Let's get this out of the way. Right, so now I'm standing up above a resin trap. I'm going to take the lid off. And in here we have a catch pot, which is this thing here. Uh, in, the, in our present catch pots, it's a cardboard, a very heavy walled cardboard cylinder. It has a wooden base glued and stapled into the bottom. And we use cardboard um, because it's, it's, it's nice and rigid and also because it's heat resistant. So this particular catch pot will certainly go up to 220 degrees C or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's ideal for catching exothermic resins. When it's full, you just throw it away. Now the only problem with this catch pot is that it's a very bulky thing to ship around the world as a spare part. So as an alternative, um, for replacement purposes, we're looking at a collapsible one. So the collapsible one starts off as a collapsible bucket, uh, woven from a heat resistant or made from a heat resistant um, fabric, and would look like this when it's erected. In a catch pot, um, that's not very appropriate because it, it's just too flexible and there can be large pressure changes in the catch pot that, that could blow it around all over the place. So we stiffen it up with a couple of these little steel ribs and we just clip, clip them on uh, roughly at right angles to the handle position. We put two of them on. So there we are, we've got our erected catch pot. It's now, you can now handle it as a one piece thing and you can pour resin out of it if you had to. While this fabric is rated to uh, about 200 degrees C or 400 degrees Fahrenheit, just to be sure, uh, at least until we've gained experience with it in the field, we're also providing a nylon, a heat resistant nylon bag, which goes over the top as additional protection. Right, so now we've got our bucket inside a nylon bag. The bag doesn't go quite to the top, and the reason for that is we want to keep the bag, which is quite floppy of course, we want to keep the bag below uh, the vacuum port here on the, on the resin trap so the bag can't get sucked into the vacuum port. So we can drop this in, in the right place. Now I'm going to rotate the catch pot, just one little tricky thing, I'm going to rotate the catch pot until the uh, one of those stiffeners is just resting on the edge of the vacuum port and the reason for that is to keep the catch pot pushed away from the vacuum port to allow free air around, uh, free flow of air around the catch pot. So we've got our catch pot in place, we can just put our lid on and tighten it up. And I've also shown you a catch pot that we've been using for a while. So this is one of the disposable catch pots. It's been in use. It's had quite a few lots of resin added to it. Um, I'll take it out of its security bag. And there it is. You can see it's, it's faded a little bit, but it's, it, this has withstood stood quite significant exotherm temperatures. Seems to be surviving fine. No sign of leakage.
Right, now just before I go, I'll talk a little bit about our connection glands because people are often interested to see how these work and we haven't had a video on them before. So I'll take the lid off because it's easier to do it up here. So right, there's our resin trap lid, there's our glands. In this particular case, it's got two different sizes of glands. There are actually four available and they can be mixed in uh, size if you wish or all the same, whatever you like. So the way these work, are, well, with all the plugs in place, you can leak test the, the trap or the complete vacuum system just to check that it's got uh, full vacuum integrity. When you're ready to put a tube in, you just loosen one of these gland nuts about half a turn, take out the plug, get yourself a piece of tube, cut the end off so that the end of the tube is, is not damaged and so it's got a square cut. Push it down into the, through the O-ring, into the gland fitting and tighten this up and now you have a strong joint, leak tight, without any mastic, very quick to do. When uh, you're ready at the end of a job you can just pull that tube out and put the plug back in. And that's how you use the glands. And I'll just show you how they're actually constructed. You don't have to do this normally, but I can pull this right out. And you can see there's the O-ring there. It just sits in a recess in the gland there. So you that. That's how the normal way of putting these back is just to put the O-ring back in. Just set them in position. the nut in, just do it up just loosely, put the plug in, tighten it up, put it on the trap. There you are, job done. Thank you.